I see some percussionists in the audience. Steve, come up, play. Anybody else wants to play? This is the right tune to do this. Please, Kathy, come up. This is ta Tabula Rasa. Tabula Rasa is all we have to think about. I am beginning. Would you like? She'll be fine. <laughs> two, one, two, three, and a four, and a Tabula rasa, now, now, now. 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 I am beginning, now, now, now. I am forgiving now, now, now. I am beginning now, now, now. I am forgiving now, now, now. Tabula rasa now, now, now. Tabula rasa, now, now, now. Tabula rasa, now, now, now. Tabula rasa, now, now, now. I am living, now, now, now. Life is always, now, now, now. I, I am living now, now, now. Life is always now, now, now. Guys, don't stop, don't stop. Now, now, now. Tabula rasa. Now, now, now. Tabula rasa. Now, now, now. Tabula rasa. Now, now. Love is living. Love is living. Now, now, now. Spirit is giving. Now, now, now. Love is living now, now, now. Spirit is giving now, now, now. Tabula rasa now, now, now. Tabula rasa now, now, now. Tabula rasa now, now, now. Tabula Excellent job, percussionists. 
It's my pleasure today to introduce to you our guest speaker. Uh, a few months ago, or I guess it was a few months ago, I got a phone call. Um, and the person on the other end of the phone said, I've written a book. It's about meditation. Would you like me to come speak? And I said, yes. <laughs> so I, it's my pleasure to introduce Sarada Chiravolu. Did I get it right? Of course. OK. <laughs> We've been practicing each other's names today. <laughs> Sarada has written a book called Home at Last, A Journey Towards Higher Consciousness. Um, and she's going to go through her experience today. She worked for many years as a in a pharmaceutical company, um, but has become an author. Uh, and she has traveled extensively. She grew up in India until she was 14 when she moved to the United States and has traveled extensively and has lived overseas in Costa Rica, Venezuela, Nigeria, and visits India uh, on occasion. So please welcome Sarada to our po oh. Good morning, everyone. Morning. You can hear me, right? It's a pleasure to be here with all of you today. I uh, would like to thank your spiritual center, Reverend Jerry, for inviting me to come and speak today. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> uh, today, as you all know, um, <clears throat> I'm here to um, share, actually, an experience I had several years ago toward attaining self-realization enlightenment how do you go back to divine essence that we have forgotten perhaps how do you realize your divinity within you that's always been there but it's just it's been shoved in the back and we have developed this thing called ego and we you know uh, that part of the domain of consciousness we convert it into ego and we kind of living okay I am this I am that I'm separate no it's we got to connect back to the real essential nature of our being, which is within us always. That's what drives us here. That's what we're living with, you know, and we need to realize that. And that comes to every one of us in time, okay? It just happens to, I had to go through that in this life. And that's why I had written this book called Home at Last. Until we tap into that divinity within and we claim our and establish our source we come from, it's just that we didn't fulfill our purpose of this existence. Why are we here otherwise? What's the purpose of our existence? You know, we need to know what's it all about. Did you ever sit there and wonder, why am I here? Why am I keep coming back into this body, you know? The energy, we're all energy, we're all consciousness, we're all that divine, part of that divinity in different forms. That's as simple as that. So we are, I'm going to talk about how that whole journey, inner journey went, I went through uh, myself directly. By the way, unless you experience it directly, it doesn't make sense. You get that steadfast information, knowledge, only when you go through that process, that journey. I call it inner journey, you know? And it will happen to every one of us when it is our time, okay? It could be hundreds of births, we come and go, we come and go and take a form, but eventually all that will stop once you connect back to divine essence and realize the divinity within us. You know, that's the purpose of the whole life existence. And uh, my turn has come in this birth. I had gone through and a little bit about that journey. It's not something that happens quick either. It is a long journey. It is a process 
a messy destructive process i must say and not to discourage you or anything but it is a process that we have to you know adjust ourselves and through meditation i did it for eight long years eight or nine long years i went through um, now you may wonder well uh, how long does it take we don't know it takes for some people it takes longer some people less depend on their constitution and where we are in this evolutionary journey of existence everybody's moving at a certain pace when they will get to that point of knowing or realizing or unfolding something within you that will take you to that kind of a journey and you will go through that and that's what i i write about all these things that when that happens some people say well i'm meditating for so many years i didn't get there yet what's the what's the deal here no it's not like that when you're ready when divine things one individual one soul is ready every one of us is ready it'll turn you around something will unfold within you and take you there that's exactly how it happened to me before you do that i'm just going to say there are three main unfoldments step by step unfoldment takes place with that journey one is called awakening that's the door opener without awakening that inner energy that been there dormant it gets awakened okay this particular soul is ready to reclaim the divinity with the source it comes from the, the soul or div, uh, divine essence or consciousness all mean the same thing i i interchange those words or spirit that we deal with in day to day life it is ready to uh, reclaim its divine essence with the universal consciousness that okay i want to know who's my source where is my real home is this is temporary we live in this outer world relative world the manifested creation of divine is one side of it but we need to be with the divine universal consciousness that's divine it's not a form it's a perfect unification of nothingness but it has full of energy full of uh, light full of everything that it knows and that's the purpose of our existence so that will unfold within us for each one of us in time that's how it it came through and second step is first is our awakening that's the door opener i just said and that will awaken and it, with that comes a lot of issues and problems we have to deal with this physical body will go through next one is called uh, realization of the self when you connect with that true nature of your essential inside the the spirit inside and let go that part of the domain that's been uh, converted into ego dispose you have to dispose that and and connect back there's a beautiful light you will face you you will see beautiful energy that the connection this itself will tell you ah you are with me now you have realized me type of thing happens and i've been through that it's it's it illumines constantly we are nothing but that energy really we're nothing but light we don't realize that when you when you tap into that you will know what's it all about you'll understand ah that's who i am you know that's the second step with that disposing the ego will come a lot of issues for this physical again you know because we're in this tied up in this body i call it imprisonment of this and you know embodiment it is we are prison prisoners in this in this body really you know that will stop after you transcend after you connect back with divine by the way when you meditate and meditate and meditate it will take you to that point where you realize eventually your divine essence and you connect back to the universal consciousness what we call god then you don't have to come back you don't have rebirths anymore you are this is it this is your final thing you know so we have to get to that point that's what it's all about so that will take place and the body will go through a lot of issues negative problems this that and uh, solitude that we never never experienced before we feel lonely we feel you know uh, uh, depressed constantly and uh, things will happen because we have get rid of the ego and we are with our two natures always at peace always at perfect scenario 
it guides us perfectly with what we should do, what we need to do perfectly. And that's the second step. Third, of course, is the unification with the totality, enlightenment, reclaiming, reestablishing our source that we come from. And that's another thing, third part. That's what I had gone through, each step at a time. But for that, we need to take care of this physical before that happens. Why? Without this body that we have, nothing works. We will not transcend. Because we humans are highly evolved beings, I think you all know that, as opposed to other life out there. We have this perfect neurophysiology within us, arrangement, you know, nervous system, endocrine system, with all the processes going on constantly, and we have, and then the chemical uh, transformations taking place all the time makes us perfectly aligned with our uh, centers within, and uh, that helps us, and also to, we'll be able to transcend properly if that all is in balance, if it's all in alignment. And that's why for that, we need to take care of, it has to be a good health. Health has to be taken care of. Never ignore your bodies. Never ignore your health. First, take care of that. What's God-given form? This is our form. The body, human form, is a very important one. I realized that when I was going through. You know, you can't just eat whatever you want. You can't just, you know, uh, watch TV 24 hours a day and sort of lay there and do nothing. And you gotta exercise, you gotta give it rest. You have to uh, practice, uh, try to reach divine by meditation or some kind of a spiritual practice. Eat right food, nourish it. It's like temple within, the divine resides within us. You know, we gotta take care of it. That got to be done so for these processes to take place and to transcend us to eventually go. And that's exactly what I realized when I was going through all these problems. All of a sudden, I'm just like you guys, right? I was like, I, I'm married. I worked in pharmaceutical company for so many years. All of a sudden, I had the shift in perception happen to me. I lost interest in what I'm doing in this relative world. You know, I didn't want to work anymore, didn't want to go home, cook dinner, do all the laundry that normally we all do, you know, take care of the home, blah, blah, blah. All these things did not faze me, did not. Show. What the world has to offer, I lost interest. I'm not interested in getting a grand big car, this, that, home. Nothing mattered to me. That's how the shift, that's what I mean by shift in perception took place. Everything dropped. It's almost like I was depressed down the dumps. But it's not depression. It's a search going on within you, saying it's your time to come home, saying it's your time to realize me and be the way you're supposed to type of thing. You know, so I uh, followed through. It's a knocking in your door, as if it's like within me there's a knock, a, a divine calling, I called it, you know? To time for you to turn around. And that's what happened. And I uh, started learning meditation. I, I started meditation through Reiki practice. I used to do Reiki because my husband wasn't doing well at that time when I was married. Um, he had a heart issue and everything, and I wanted to help him so badly without, you know, medical surgeries, blah, 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 all that. He did have all that, but still, I did Reiki, and I, I felt confident that there's something beyond that helps all of us, our health and everything, you know? Not just medicines, not just this, not just that, procedures. I know we depend on all that, but eventually who takes care of you is him, you know? His light, his energy that really gives us everything we need. And I believed in that so bad, and I started meditating. Meditation takes you directly to divine as opposed to other, other methods that we, we undertake. Yoga, prayers, this, that. Humans do a lot of things to reach the divine, right? But meditation is the right thing to do, uh, is direct and fastest way to reach divine light. So I meditated, I loved it. I was like, made a habit of it, and it was fantastic. So I kind of, uh, it's a passion of mine, even today. I don't sleep without meditation. I don't get up without meditation. I love it. It's, it's my home. 
you connect back to that universal consciousness, oneness of nothingness. God is not a form, God is nothing. It's a nothingness, such a serene dimension of light and energy and intelligence of its own. So that's what happened to me. Eventually I, I tapped into that. And of course I went through a lot of hassles with uh, Kundalini getting awakened that because normally we humans work with such small amount of life force to do our daily work, go to work, sleep, watch TV, eat, go to bed, right? Normally. But we don't need much, much uh, energy for that. We need a lot of force, a lot of uh, life force within us to take that soul back and reconnect back to the universal consciousness. Now, how do you get that much? That's why Kundalini gets awakened. The inner energy knows who's ready. It gets awakened, and at that time, you are supposed to meditate, meditate, and take it, that, that light and energy, ascend it to take it back into the top of your uh, head, where this subtle energy center is called chakra, the most important chakra opens up, and you connect back to the universal consciousness. That's exactly how it happened to me. When I was meditating deeper and deeper, eventually, I was sitting underneath the tree. All my meditations were outdoors, by the way. Nature uplifts you, by the way. You take a walk, you take meditate outside, you, get, you feel better all of a sudden. Never stay in the house. Go out into the nature. It, it's the universal consciousness, the energy is everywhere. Trees have it. Lust of dream, you know, all the other life out there. It helps you uplift yourself. So that's what I used to do. I used to love it. And one fine morning I was meditating outside. I went deep into that silence and stillness. I didn't know it's much better than what I was doing before. And I said, wow, this is very interesting. I was deeper and deeper as if everything was shut down. No outer world. I could not hear a thing outside. Everything was energy. I could feel it in my bones. I could feel it in this flesh. Everything is resonating. Everything is vibrating like crazy. My head was vibrating as if there's a, there's a thing going on, a death, life and death inside. That, that thing is cleansing all the bad karma or the negativity that's within you. You have accumulated over lifetimes. It's gone. Everything is gone. It has to go because it's finally giving you that time where you can connect back to divinity. And that's exactly what I felt. And I felt like, you know, eventually actually there is no outer world and there is no body consciousness. I don't know if I have this body. I didn't have my hands where they were. I was just meditating. God only knows how long I was sitting in my backyard. Three hours, four hours, I don't know. Finally, I was like, tapped into that finest fabric of consciousness, finest, perfect unification of nothingness, has its own intelligence, has its own light glow. It's just illuminating everywhere. And even blueness coming. There's a lot of different ways he's expressing himself, that light. I felt and I saw and I, I was part of it. It's like uh, that primordial energy almost where everything springs from and goes back into. That's when you realize you're part of that energy. You're nothing but energy. You went back and unified, unification took place with the, your source, your, your family. That is your real life. That's your real home. This part, what we are here is temporary and we come back. Of course, this is the other side of the coin. There's two sides of the coin. You flip back and forth. You're with the unit after that, you're always with that divine and this manifested divinity that called life. You have to do here perfectly. This is your job. It's like, you know, take care of what's in your plate first also, what your responsibilities are, because it's gotta do good in here, in this life. We can't just go around doing bad stuff. That's why they go through all these problems and come back over and over and over. Right? Because we've been doing all sin sinning everything. We're not living a righteous life. Until you know that, we will keep coming back. We will not end the cycle of 
you know, coming back. It's almost like a new birth. Once you transcend, you're always with that divine essence. Your communion with divinity is continuous, even if you're doing working, if you're cooking, what have you. You know who you are from that point on. Transcendence does miracles. It gives you that highest potential to do just about anything. And you're at that point where your awareness is fully, you know, heightened and perfect way of living in this manifested world. That's what we all want. We cannot just, you know, do whatever and okay, go to bed and go. You want to live like the way you're supposed to, you know, with the full potential. All you do is think about it and you can do it. There's nothing we cannot do. We are the uh, special form, like I told you. We are very lucky to be human form as opposed to other forms out there. You know, trees and light, you know, birds and insects, and they're all evolving still. They didn't get to that point of, that's why human form is the best. You gotta take advantage of it. You have to go back to divine essence eventually. And that has an, we have that opportunity to do so in this life. And that's why God gives us that thing. Once I went through all that and I realized, my God, that's that big aha moment. I realized, you know, how wonderful life is. We, we, how many of us don't know that but waste away our lives over and over and over? It's like a practically new life, new birth, you know? We uh, realize a lot of things and we get such a steadfast understanding of why we are here and it is why it is only temporary, by the way. A lot of people think this is it, our life is this, you know? There's no attachments, no uh, desires any longer, no accumulating junk, no accumulating everything that the world has to offer you. You don't have to do that, you know? Is, we gotta think that it is just live and help out others. Bring others, uplift up other people, you know, to, to get into this mode of way of thinking and help. That's what I do now, really. After all this, I do these talks and I, I tell them any spiritual practice you do, it has nothing to do with religion, race, or gender, or what you do for living, by the way. Every one of us will go. It's not a property of one individual. It's for every one of us to go through this process. And I wanted to uplift everybody and try to tell you, please, you know, try to do that. And I wrote all that in my book, Home at Last. I call it Home at Last because I'm home. I feel comfortable, I feel thrilled, I feel thankful for divine for giving me and ending my embodiment as of now. I don't have to come back anymore. I mean, I don't know what will happen to us later on. He may give another assignment, divine, but at least in human form, I don't have to come back or we don't have to come back once you transcend, by the way, because your communion with divine is continuous. You're always there. You're coming back and come, going back. It's like two fists. Two coin, two faces in the same coin, right? You gotta do both perfectly well. And that's what the details I wrote in my book and much more if you wanna see it, how the body gets impacted if you don't take care of it, what happens, which I, go, I went through in my process of 80 years. It wasn't easy, by the way. I'm not gonna you know, lie and say, well, it's gonna be a beautiful journey. Please go ahead and you know, do this so you'll be... So it's a, it's a hardship for a while. We're used to such a limited, like I told you, limited uh, life force. But we have a lot of life force inside, like it's a 100 watt, 20 watt bulb and a 200 watt. Like, it's like the body is shaken up. It's just what's going on here. All the digestive system gets screwed up. Your nervous system gets screwed up. Everything goes haywire. And that's why we gotta take care of it. And that's what happened to me. I don't want to take too much time because I already I did, but to read my book, get a copy of it for sure. You'll love it. Thank you for Reverend uh, Jerry for inviting me here again. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. So let's take time now to do a brief meditation. And I invite you to get comfortable wherever you are. If you feel comfortable, close your eyes. 
Relax where you're sitting and take a deep breath. Every beat of my heart radiates divine love, the harmonizing power. I am one with the harmonizing power of divine love. Whenever I find it hard to be loving, I turn to divine love by which I harmonize my thoughts and realize my true nature, which is love. By the radiating power of divine love, I am loving. I breathe into the healing power of God, the renewing pulse in my body, mind, and spirit. Healing is natural to me as I become a silent witness to the magnificent power of divine life in my body, mind, and spirit. I dwell upon the amazing capacity of wounds to heal and challenges to be overcome. I am renewed as I pray. All wisdom is within. I turn within to know all I need to know in the silence. Let me be still now and silent, receptive to the gentle, gentle flow of inner wisdom. I do not scatter my attention by grasping for answers all around me. Instead, I am still and silent, attentive to divine wisdom still and silent. Celebrating unexpected blessings, I live well today. My eyes are open to notice the untold ways I am blessed. I cherish unexpected kind words and thoughtful gestures, landscapes, nourishment, and every kind of blessing. I behold the beauty in each person I connect with, receiving their presence as a gift. I pray in gratitude for living well today. One with God and one with all, I am a peaceful presence. As I pray for peace in the world, I affirm I am a living expression of peace. God's peace is my peace, flowing from within my prayerful mind and heart. I affirm my unity with all people and know that peace begins with me.
fortified by prayer and meditation this time we have spent, we renew our spiritual sense of purpose, which is to be the light of the world. We agree to shine the light of love, life, wisdom, and peace into the moments going forward. And as we end this time, I invite you to come back to wherever you are, maybe wiggle your fingers and toes a bit. When you're comfortable, open your eyes and come back to this time and place. I'd like to thank Serata for our wonderful message today. It was great to have you here, uh, and I really appreciate the time you spent with us. Thank you. So, here at Unity Spiritual Center, we are an, an ocean, ocean of, of love. love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we have an inspiring vision, an exciting mission, and compelling values by which we strive to live. Each week, we will join together in saying one of our statements. Please join me in saying this week's statement, which is on the screen. Our values are, we are spirit-led, generous with resources, inclusive, joyously creative, and guided by integrity. And in this space, feeling so inspired and feeling enriched by what we experienced here today, let us take time now to be a channel for enrichment through our generous ties and love offerings. As Michael shares another song with us, you are invited to support this congregation with a check made out to USC or cash or by making a donation online. If you are in here in the sanctuary, the ushers will come forward to take your offering. Um, and and uh, if you are online, I invite you to go to our website and donate online. Practicing the principles of tithing ourselves as a spiritual community, we are pleased to tithe 10% of the offering collected every Sunday to various unity organizations and local, non local nonprofits serving our city. So let us take a moment now to bless our tithes and love offerings as we cup them in our hands or hold them next to our hearts. Let us say our offering blessing, which is on the screen. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. The light of love becomes a flame that warms a heart that will proclaim that love can change a single mind which shall release more of its kind when the loud of love ribbon prails universe as one regales in the light of love shall we live in the dawning of the morning as the world begins to sing harmonies created in the clouds you can feel the chorus as the world begins to sing sprinkling joy and love among the crowds cause the light of love becomes the flame that warms the heart that will proclaim the love can change a single mind which shall release more of its kind when the sound of love prevails the universe as one regales in the light of love shall we live Sun lights up the corners of the smile upon your face. God creates another perfect day. Pouring love into our life, the fill in every space. We are forever grateful as we pray. The light of love becomes a flame that warms the heart that will proclaim. The love can change a single mind, which shall release more of its kind. When the sound of love prevails, the universe as one regales. In the light of love shall we live.
The light of love becomes a flame that warms a heart that will proclaim that love can change a single mind which shall release more of its kind. And when the sound of love prevails, universe as one regales. In the light of love shall we live. In the light of love shall we live. In the light of love shall we live. Please join me in blessing our tithes and love offerings. Spirit of the living God, bless the acts of our hands, our minds, our hearts. May everything offered here at Unity Spiritual Center be a reflection of all that is good within us. Grant us the courage to patiently listen for the stirring of your presence. Enliven our spirits with humor Fill us with reverence for one another and gratitude for our diversity. May unity, beauty, and truth be the fruit of all we do, and so it is. Amen. <laughs>